Hey guys, welcome back to the Art of Craftsmanship. My name is Dustin and today in the shop, I'm gonna be putting a handle on this awesome Damascus Viking ax from Forged and Fire champion, John Nagel from Nagel House Forge. Now he reached out to me to see if I would put a handle on it and he sent over this really beautiful piece of Coca Bolo. So I'll be using this, I'm gonna do a straight taper and a little bit of a flare at the end. I'm gonna do a little bit of a leather wrap at the top once we get it on. And I'm gonna get started, but before I do, I'm gonna send you over to John to tell you a little bit about how he made this Viking ax. All right, so this Viking axe is made up of three different types of steel. We've got 15N20, that's a high nickel, uh, that's that bright shiny steel. We've got 80 CRV2, that's going to be the, uh, the darker steel you see in the etch. It's a high vanadium, so it's real tough stuff, uh, great for Damascus and, and high impact uh, type of weapons. Uh, and then I've also thrown in some spring steel, that adds a little bit, a, a different layer of contrast uh, in the pattern. So you're going to have a bright shiny steel. You'll have a real dark steel, and then the 50, 5160 is going to be kind of a gray. Um, so we'll have three different colors playing uh, in this pattern. It's 75 layers total, uh, forge welded together uh, in a pretty simple billet. And then I ground in kind of a crisscross raindrop pattern, drew that out, and uh, that kind of uh, makes all those layers come to the surface and interact with one another and stuff like that. Uh, looks really, really cool, um, kind of like a camouflage pattern, if you ask me. Uh, then it was just all grinding on uh, my 2x72s, uh, a lot and a lot of hand filing on that eye, as I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, these axes, they take a lot of work, even though they're small, um, they are pretty intense in terms of the uh, amount of production and labor that goes into them. Uh, really looking forward to seeing what you do. Really appreciate your help on this project, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be looking forward to that video. Thanks, man. This piece of Coca Bolo is 24 inches long and I wanna trim it down to 20 inches to start with because I want the handle to be about 19 to 19 and a half inches to the top of the eye where it's proud so I can wrap leather around it there. Now this has really beautiful grain down here at the bottom and so I don't wanna cover that up. So I'm gonna leave that at the bottom of the handle where your hand is and where it's just raw wood so you can see that beautiful grain. So I'll trim it off from the top. Now again, I wanna get it down to 20 inches. Uh, that way this ax head will be right at about 18 and a half or 19 inches. And because this is going to be a straight taper straight down this, this is a one and a half inch square piece of Coca Bolo. I'm doing a center line on all four sides so I can keep it straight. So I have a taper from the flare out right below the head down toward the end of the handle and then a little flare out the end for the end of your palm swell. I'm gonna be putting the ax head and eye along this way. This is a little bit less, maybe 50 degrees to the grain, which is perfectly fine. Uh, ideally, the best grain orientation would be parallel with it like that. And you definitely don't wanna go perpendicular to the grain. That's your least strength here. So anytime you're hanging an ax head, you wanna go as close to parallel with your ax head with the grain. So I'll be running it this way. All right, I'm gonna trace the ax head on top so I know what to start with, start to cut down to. The axe eye. Now that I moved over to the vise, I'm gonna be doing some hand work. I'm gonna start out with the draw knife to get this shape down to that general shape of the eye, and we'll test fit it. Once I have a kind of test fit, then I'll start using the Shinto rasp and the half round rasp and the four in one to really get it down to a really nice, clean, tight fit. Thank you. 
And the axe hung on the head really nicely right now. Uh, it's seated and fitted really well, but I do want to pull this axe head off and just do a slight chamfer at the bottom of the eye. Now the bottom of the eye is really sharp right now and it's cutting into the wood. So I'm just going to round it just a little bit so it wants to wedge down on. That way when I hammer it from the end, it'll really seat it nice and tight. I made some pencil marks below and above the eye, pulled it off and I'm marking on that space inside the eye about two thirds of the way down. That's how far I wanna cut my kerf and that's how far I want my wedge to go. All right, now we're gonna take this outside and finish this the other way around out on the anvil. That looks really good, it's all the way down in. I'm gonna trim this down another maybe quarter of an inch or so. Leave it proud so I have something to wrap around the leather, but that looks really good. There's a little crack here, but that's okay, that'll fill in. I just had visions of me grinding this handle and hitting the really nicely etched clean ax head with the grinder belt. So let me, before I do any of that, I'm gonna tape the head up to protect it from any little mistakes or errors I might have in touching this with the grinder belt.
a little present. This is shaped down really nicely. I'm really happy with it so far, but I'm gonna do a little bit more shaping with the rasps and then I'll finish up with some nice hand sanding. Feels very nice. It's looking really good. I'm gonna go put a single coat of oil on this now, and then we'll do the leather wrap at the top. I'm gonna oil this up with boiled linseed oil. I have some three to four ounce leather here. I'm gonna use this, but I need to cut a long thin strip to do the leather wrap on the top of the handle. Now I wanna do about six inches down, but that one's all oily, so I can't do it on that. So I'm gonna use uh, the little Osage handled uh, scout hatch that I made for Corinne as a substitute. And I'll take some string and wrap it around this to figure out how much before I cut it. That's probably way more than I need. But that looks cool. I'm gonna be using a bison brown leather dye to get this a nice dark brown. I'm gonna be doing my leather wrap with the leather stripping I just made. Some 2P10, 2P10 activator, super glue, and a T tiny finish nail that I just made. Finish it off.
Nice. This is great. Leather looks really good. One more coat of oil and we'll be done. All right, guys. Well, I am super pumped with how this turned out. This is just looks awesome. Nothing like a Viking axe to make you feel like a man. This, uh, this leather work wrapped around the top, I just think looks really nice and not too over the top, kind of authentic and gives you some good grip. Um, it just turned out really good. I love this Coca Bola as well for this handle. It's a beautiful pattern, it looks gorgeous, and the shape of it is really nice. It just fits in your hand really nice and nice little palm swell at the end. And a beautiful wedge. I mean, everything turned out really good. I know this is going to be something that John's going to be really proud of and he's, his uh, customer is going to be really happy with. I love this axe head from John. This is really beautiful Damascus uh, and a gorgeous shape. Feels really good, three quarters of a pound. If you want to see how John made this and check out all his other work, go check him out on Instagram at Nagel House Forge. I'll put a link in the description below, but John does some really awesome work. And he also does a lot of really fun live streams. So pop into his live streams and tell him I said, hey, this has been a blast. Uh, make sure, if you guys haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe. You can check us out on Instagram at The Art of Craftsmanship and at The Art of Camera Guy. You can go over and support us on Patreon. And listen to our podcasters. We actually have an episode with John talking about knife making and forge and fire and all that stuff. It's a great episode. Go ahead and check it out. That's it, guys. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.